Welcome to Current Events. We're so glad you joined us today. I've got Donna with me and Christy. And we are going to discuss the latest news, the latest developments um, as far as what's happening in China, what's happening in Russia, and also what's happening in Israel, which is very, very significant because Israel is the timepiece. So if you want to know what's going on in the world, um, as, as far as Christianity is concerned, you always have to look at Israel because Israel is God's timepiece. So uh, let's go to the first clip now. It's about uh, China and Taiwan. The American and Chinese defense ministers have held their first face-to-face -face talks in Singapore. Beijing has said that it will not hesitate to start a war if Taiwan declares independence. Wei Feng Hu said, and I quote, if anyone dares to split Taiwan from China, the Chinese army will definitely not hesitate to start a war, no matter the cost. Lloyd Austin met Wei Feng Hu at the sidelines of the Shangri-La Dialogue Security Summit. The relationship between the two nations has deteriorated in recent years. The latest meeting comes as the two countries spar over a wide range of issues, including Taiwan, the South China Sea, cybersecurity, and human rights issues in Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Taiwan is one of the major issues between the two countries. Beijing views the island nation as its own territory. It has time and again threatened to seize it, even if it means using force. Well, it just seems like there's so much... Uh, I mean, there's nation rising against nation and uh, kingdom against kingdom. It's just completely... Uh, the world seems to be just turning upside down, Donna. It is. Now, look, I've been watching China and the Taiwan situation because of Russia and Ukraine from, uh, from the Afghanistan last year. Yes. So last year when they went to Afghanistan, one thing that, uh, well, we didn't find, I didn't find this out until after uh, the disastrous uh, pulling out from Afghanistan, that, that whole thing with the Taliban. But the thing that bothered me back then was... Um, uh, how cozy uh, Putin and Xi Jinping were. I saw a video of them feeding one another. They were hanging yes. out. Everybody's having a good time. And then you see with Afghanistan, um, the they were there two weeks before Biden pulled out of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Both Xi Jinping, or, I don't know if they themselves, but I know it was Russia and China were there. I think it was Xi Jinping and Putin. And they were there two weeks before. Then the Afghanistan pullout happened. Mm -hmm. And um, they were the first two countries to recognize the Taliban as a legitimate government in Afghanistan. So you have sort of this, they're over there all on the same side over there. Mm -hmm. You've got Russia and China, who normally wouldn't be so friendly, but now they've got a, a, a common goal. Yes. Which is expanding their empires. Right, which is, this is the thing. Yes. Expanding empires. Yes. Okay, so China's expanding and Russia's expanding. And I want you to see this clip about Russia. Let's go to the clip. Aziz is keeping an eye on all the developments in Ukraine, and she joins us now live from Kiev. So, Sama, Putin basically admitting his war is just a, a land grab after all. Absolutely. And, and it really shows the very imperial intentions, the disregard for modern rules of sovereignty and nationhood. Uh, he simply dismisses Ukraine as a nation state, essentially saying that these are Russian territories justifying this, this truly horrific and bloody uh, war. And that war right now is focused in one flash, flashpoint. You mentioned at Severodonetsk, uh, uh, one of the last strongholds for Ukrainian forces in the region of Luhansk. Uh, the situation on the ground is changing hour by hour. President Zelensky says, Ukrainian forces are having to fight over every single inch, and that battle is not going the way of Ukrainian forces. They are outmanned, they are outgunned. This is an artillery war, Kim, and Ukrainian forces are running out of artillery. Their only saving grace at this point, if you're reading the battleground, is that Western weapons might come in time. But again, if Russian artillery, if Russian forces are able to gain meter by meter ground before those weapons arrive, it's hard to imagine how much longer Ukrainian forces can hold out. And already uh, beyond the east in the south, 
uh, where Russia, of course, has made major gains in, in, in the last few weeks since the start of this conflict, they are solidifying those gains. We want to show you that larger map where you can see uh, that Russia has taken that sweep uh, uh, along the Black Sea, along the Sea of Azov. Those are key and important ports. And there's a major consequence to this here, a domino effect, Kim, and that is is grain. Ukraine is the breadbasket of the world. And currently, there is 20 million tons of grain stuck in this country. It cannot be exported. The international community is ringing the alarm. They say this could trigger a crisis of hunger. Millions could be left starving, deprived of their basic needs. This could trigger larger conflicts in the Middle East and Africa. If this grain is unable to get out of Ukraine, if there is no way found to export it, there was talks in Ankara uh, this week to try to find a diplomatic solution. Uh, foreign Minister, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov speaking to his counterparts. Still, it is an impasse. There is no solution there yet. It, and again, it is because Russia controls that area along the Black Sea. Yes, Ukraine has uh, the port of Odessa. That's the key port for exporting uh, this grain. But Russian forces, they say, are preventing them from being able to put that grain on ships, send it out. This is a truly concerning chapter in the war and one that so far has no diplomatic solution, Kim. Well, there you see what's going on with those, those two countries, China and Russia. And uh, it looks like uh, Russia is gaining a momentum. And when you look at the the picture from a biblical point of view, uh, we know what happens with Russia and China in the end days. We know that they come against the land of Israel uh, to take spoil, to take, uh, to take, I believe, energy. Uh, not only that, but uh, it's, there's water. They speak about water. They speak about food. Um, uh, these, these Old uh, Testament uh, people yeah. It's 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 kind of, I mean, we can see how it's coming together. Yes, and and you know, I, I, the, the point I was making before we watched that clip was, it appears to me, from observing this over the past year or so, that uh, they have some kind of a deal, maybe Russia and China. Like you're going to get your empire, and I'll get my empire, kind of thing. So they, we've all known like Hong Kong and Taiwan. That's yeah. China's thing. So then when you're looking at the Bible and then Iran, because it seems like this is the other thing I was going to say is it seems like they use uh, the Muslims as sort of like their henchmen, you know, Russia's over there in Syria and stuff. So they, they, it seems to be some, I don't know if it's a, it must be an arrangement of some kind. So it's very interesting when you look at the, well, they're the biblical. Siding with, they're siding with each other and, right. and they, they have their own agendas and it, it's all playing into Bible prophecy. But eventually, now, won't they? I mean, when every, let's say hypothetically everybody gets what they want. So if they're not really friends. So then what would happen then? And what does the Bible say is going to happen? Well, there's Iran and Russia. Right. And then, of course, you can't take your, take, uh, you have to always remember that Turkey, Turkey, Turkey is also involved in what happens in the end times. Yes. So we always watch Turkey very carefully. And if you notice, what happened was Turkey um, uh, was trying to stop the, 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 the nations from joining the NATO yes. alliance. Yes. So There's we always have to watch Turkey. But one. There's, There's one. also chaos with Turkey and Israel right yes. now. Doobie and I just filmed a show that aired yesterday. We did a, a show together, like a Zoom one, and... Israel's warned the, yes. have given this huge travel warning for Turkey because they're basically saying that they're trying to hunt Israelis down. So there are there are people po positioned at the Tel Aviv yes. airport at Ben Gurion saying, please do not get on these flats to Turkey. You know, there's absolute chaos, and so we're seeing a lot of militarization happening because obviously of the Turkey-Iran connection. Yes. I and mean, obviously, for any of you who want to, you can go back and watch that on IsraelUpdate.org. Doobie and I did a whole show about it yesterday. But like Jane's saying, Turkey is something we always have to watch. Yes. And and Christy, why don't you go ahead and, and speak about the, the uh, Judean Samaria? Yes. So I've got uh, an article, article here that was um, on Israel 365 News posted about a week ago. And it says, Israel has never annexed Judea and Samaria since the army won the Six-Day War in 1967. So to legally enforce the law for Israeli citizens in that region, 
the government has consistently voted on an emergency law or the Judea and Samaria law. And this is speaking about how for the first time since 1967, Judea and Samaria may no longer be part of Israel, which is a massive problem. This law grants Israeli citizens the right to enjoy all the benefits and responsibilities of living in Israel. But this past Monday, which was two weeks ago, the vote failed for the first time since 1967. The cancellation of the law has until July 1st to be reversed. If not, Israeli civilian law will not apply to Israeli civil, uh, citizens living in post-1967 Israel. This means no police, no health services or civilian courts. The IDF would handle all legal matters as they control the region. Any Israeli living in Judea, Samaria will no longer have social benefits. Senior fellow at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, Emmanuel Navon, told Israel 365 News. Any crime will be judged in a military court, he added, saying that it would be a different country. If the law is not renewed by the end of the month, any Israeli resident will become a foreigner under military rule. On the bright side, Navan, a lecturer at Hebrew University, said that Israelis in Judea and Samaria would no longer need to pay taxes. But um, Israel, the Israeli law would no longer apply to you if you cross the green line. Although many believe that the government will collapse before the emergency law goes into effect, Navan, who himself lives in the Judea town of Eflat, left room for pessimism, saying that the law's cancellation might not be reversed because the opposition would be so irresponsible. And that's a massive thing. You know, in 1967, this war happens... Judea and Samaria are obviously taken again by Israel, as is rightfully theirs anyway, as given to them in the, uh, in, <clears throat> by God and the borders of Israel. You can go look at that in Numbers chapter 34. The borders are very clearly laid out. But now we're seeing what's starting to happen, especially as the American administration isn't backing Israel the way it should, looking at talking about a two-state solution, looking at talking about returning to pre-1967 lands. This is a big problem. It's a huge problem, but the prophet Ezekiel yes. had a lot to say about it. And he, did. he predicted this that is going on. He predicted it over 600 years before Jesus ever came to planet Earth. And I'm going to read it to you, uh, some portions of it to you today, because it's so unbelievably amazing. Um, so Ezekiel, God tells Ezekiel, prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord, because the enemy has said of you, ah, oh, the ancient heights have become our possession because they made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side so that you become a possession of the rest of the nations. And you are taken up by the lips of talkers and slandered mm. by people. Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. To the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the valleys, the desolate wastes, and the cities that have been forsaken, which became plunder and mockery to the rest of the nations all around. Surely I have spoken in my burning jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom, and now that is Jordan, who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and spiteful minds in order to plunder its open country. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I have raised my hand in an oath that surely the nations that are around you shall bear their own shame. But you, mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they are about to come. For indeed, I am for you and I will turn to you and you shall be tilled and sown. I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, all of it, and the city shall be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bear young. I will make you inhabited as in the former times and do better for you than in your beginnings. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And you know, um, I notice here in Ezekiel, he always, God always says, and remind them, then you will know that I am the yes. Lord. Okay, so um, it's it's just amazing to me that the prophet Ezekiel, six hundred years before uh, Jesus ever came to planet Earth, I mean, he predicted this. Ezekiel actually never saw his prophecy come to pass. Uh, it took, I mean, it's taken over two thousand six hundred almost 2,600 years yes. for this prophecy to actually be fulfilled. And uh, and Ezekiel 
never got to see it. He never, he didn't know that his prophecy was going to be fulfilled in such an unbelievably like shockingly awesome accurate. way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's just, it's just, <clears throat> the Bible is an awesome book. It predicts the end from the beginning. And there's so much more, uh, there's so much more prophecy in the Bible that speaks about what's taking place right now when you see China and when you see Russia and when you see what's happening to Israel and you think that the world has gone mad and uh, God doesn't know what's going on. He knows exactly what's going on. He's allowing certain things to unfold and his plan will ultimately uh, benefit mankind because it's it's there to, to, to save us from destruction, basically. He's, God has made a way, a way, to, a way of escape for, for mankind. And um, to me, it's just the most unbelievable, unbelievable book. The, the more I study it, the more, uh, I mean, I just, I just get so overwhelmed by the accuracy of the Bible and God's word to us. We, we have something we can hang on to because we sometimes get so... We get so uh, concerned about our day-to-day life and and what what are, you know just our day-to-day everyday things go wrong. We see we see governments failing, we see the economy failing. And we wonder what's what's going to happen to us. You know, when 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 Jesus has already told us that uh, the little birds that fly around they got to find their food. He knows the hair on our head. He knows every he knows everything about us. Yeah. And um, so we can take, we can take courage. We can take um, solace in knowing that God has our back. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of people out there right now are just really, really concerned about about uh, your life, your family. And so we're going to ask Christy to pray today for our, for us, for for God's uh, intervention in our situations and our everyday life. And so, Christy, would you mind praying for us today? Of course. Father, I thank You so much for every single person who's watching. And God, we know that You are the same. You do not change. You're not like a shadow that shifts. You're constant. You're immovable. You are the great I am. You're the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last. You are everything. You are all-encompassing. Nothing takes you by surprise and you're completely aware of literally everything that is going on. And so, Father, every person who's struggling with feeling fearful as we look at headlines and, you know, there's, it just does. Like Jane said, it feels like the world's gone upside down. Throughout history, it seemed like man has gone mad many, many times, but you have remained. And Israel is such a testament to us of your character. It shows that what you've said you will do, you will do. So I pray for every person who's feeling hopeless or feeling fearful, I pray that you would help us to do what your word says, which is to lift up our eyes to the hills because where our help comes from is from you, oh, the, the great and holy one, the maker of heaven and earth. You who watch over us, you do not slumber or sleep and every single thing that is going on in every life is in your hands and you care so deeply. So I pray, Holy Spirit, for a sense of deep peace, that full shalom that goes beyond cognitive and reasonable understanding to be every person's portion. I pray that it would be as if, as if your Holy Spirit comes and just floods every heart, every soul, every mind, that wherever everybody's watching from right now, they would feel a tangible presence of your peace because you are the Prince of Peace. And that peace goes beyond what we can see. It goes beyond what we can understand. It is based solely and entirely on who you are. So we're asking Holy Spirit for divine intervention, yes. a divine just influx of your presence that will still and calm every fear, that will quiet quiet in every racing, raging mind and that will bring hope where there is hopelessness because of who you are. It is in Christ alone that we place our trust. You are the solid rock upon which we build our lives. You are the great cornerstone. And I thank you for this and I'm trusting you for a supernatural peace to be released in every heart and mind in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Well, thank you for joining us today and we will see you on the next Current Events. Luke chapter number two, verse 52. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with men. God brings increase into our lives. 
How can the God of all e of eternity, the God of creation, when he comes into our hearts, how can our lives not increase spiritually, soulishly in every way? And especially in this day and this time, we're praying for financial increase for you as we're putting God first, as we're sowing unto him and into his kingdom where things are incorruptible in the kingdom of God. We can't lose in that sense. God will protect us. God will provide for us. And we're standing in agreement for you, just like Jesus, that your life will just keep increasing and increasing and in have faith for that. Mix your faith with this word because God wants to do that for you. Let's worship him and honor him now in the offering as we do. Let me just say, <clears throat> Sheer Ellen's uh, wrote in her testimony. She said, I so enjoyed watching the show uh, with your guest, Amanda Grace, and I joined in prayer for ha with House of Destiny as I feel like all of you are family. Ministry has been a blessing in so many ways. Most importantly, the Lord used your dad to introduce me to the whole prophecy thing. <laughs> I grew up in a denominational setting uh, that knew nothing about taught any, nothing about prophecy. And I remember thinking at first, wow, should I even be watching this? But I really felt the Holy Spirit uh, kept bringing me back. I miss your dad, but clearly see the Lord is taking very good care of the ministry. You have taught me so much about loving and praying for Israel. Ellen, Ellen, thank you so much. And we are so happy that the message of the gospel is going around the world through the House of Destiny. And from this platform that uh, Kim and Jane have labored decades uh, in, we just believe God together with you now because there's so much for God yet to do for Jesus to be glorified in the earth and in your lives in Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Hello, House of Destiny family. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We want to hear from you. We want to hear all the good things that God is doing in your life. And if you have a prayer request, make sure that you send both of those to hope at houseofdestiny.org. And we want to remind you of all the viewing options that we have for all ages. Of course, we have our regular broadcast on Saturdays and Wednesdays. And then we have Monday, which is Prophetic Rewind, which is everything Thing, Prophet Kim Clement that he ministered with. And then on Friday is all things Israel. Then we have Destiny Kids and Destiny Worship. So make sure that you gather your family, pick an option, and we are so excited to be a part of your life.